Hello, I'm Mark Elliott from Fluent Finance Abroad, and I'm here today with Stuart Weeks, my colleague. Hi, Stuart. Hi. Um, most of you would know us as uh, independent Spanish mortgage consultants, but Stuart and I, we used to work in the UK um, as qualified mortgage consultants there. And so therefore we have a good understanding um, as to the UK market. Now recently, since COVID, we've been, um, we've been lucky enough to deal with, um, with certain companies and certain lenders. And what's become apparent is that there's a lot more UK lenders who are um, actively searching for new business. And that new business is actually, they're offering mortgages to foreigners. And what I mean by foreigners is uh, British expats that live around the world. And we live in Spain, so we speak to quite a few of those. Mm who actively have property assets in the UK or are looking to invest in property assets. Not only um, are they targeting British uh, expats, but they're also open to foreign nationals as well now. Is that, is that yeah, right? Completely. It, it's it's complete turnaround from what it was five, six years ago, where if, if you were non-tax resident, to the UK and earned your income in, in a currency different to sterling, the, the UK lenders had a real problem with, with the whole currency uh, at risk. Now, now they are actively seeking out, and there's a big market for non UK non-tax residents. So if you're an expat living in Spain and, and, and you want to buy a property in the UK as a, as a some people want it as a rental property, some people want it for while the kids are at university, some people want it for, for um, holiday let or, or a second home. Regardless, of the, I, we went over to the UK literally a couple of weeks ago. Met, I met with uh, several lenders and, and they are keen to lend to uh, expats, to, to non-UK non income, whether they be English, American, whatever. So if, uh, for example, if I was living in Dubai and I was interested in a property in London or the Cotswolds or something like that, as long as I had a big enough deposit, would I be able to get some lending? Yeah, certainly, certainly. For, for, for somewhere like Dubai, they're, they're looking at maximum 60, maybe 70% loan to value. Although potentially you're looking to buy to let, the rental income will come into account and, and the calculation for affordability is still on the rental income they will require you to have your own income. They, they always do with, with expats. Not necessarily uh, sufficient to, to support the mortgage, but for example, one of the lenders I met with said they, they won't look at an applicant who has an income of less than 25,000 sterling, the equivalent of 25,000 sterling. That's quite low, isn't it? It, it is. For, for, if you're looking at buying a property for three, 400,000, it's, it's very low. Okay, so the kind, kind of clients that we've helped in the past, recent past, um, me personally, I, I, I helped a, a colleague uh, who worked in the real estate industry who, 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 who bought a property in Manchester because their daughter was going to, to Manchester to, for study and she wanted um, to invest in property. What kind of mortgage would, would that look like? Would that be a, a box standard buy to let mortgage, would it? Pretty much. Um... It's pretty much it, it's again it's something quite common that the, the when kids go to university they spend their first year in halls and then they they have to move out the parents think rather than paying this rent every month for them to live for the next two or three years somewhere why don't we buy a place and and our daughter can live there and we can rent out the other three rooms in the place as well and make a profit on it the banks will lend up to up to seventy percent on that, and um, and it's based on the the lending is based on the rental income that the, the property will acquire per room. Um, student letting they, they they lend based on the student letting. When when the daughters finish university, often what we find is people find that the property is actually a nice little earner and they and they keep it and they hang on to it for quite a few years afterwards. They could get another tenant or more students yeah, well, in. in. In student student accommodation, once, once you've got the student accommodation in the right place, you, you're never short of students to fill it year on year. Question for you then, Stuart, how many lenders 
do do we have access to if we're considering? Uh, uh, UK lenders, we, 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 we have access to the whole of the UK market. The um, So that's in excess of 200 lenders with, with, with a total of 4,000 mortgage products. That's quite a lot uh, then. It, it is a lot and it, it, it covers everything from your standard buy to let mortgages, your, your residential mortgages, equity release from either of those properties, releasing funds from either of those properties, second charge mortgages on, on those properties if, if your existing mortgage has got a big penalty on it. Um, but then, as I said, the the UK lenders have really opened up to the expat buy to let market and, and there's a lot of lenders coming in, not to the degree of, degree of 200, but cer certainly we're talking 15 or 20 lenders that, that are looking at, at the expat market, who, who are willing to lend on the expat market. One thing that I found um, very interesting when we went back um, was the, the amount of different uh, lenders that, that there were, the different types of uh, flexible options. But the basics of mortgage lending on our investment property um, it's very common to lend on an interest-only basis. Yes, yeah, and, and, and certain, certainly with um, with any buy-to-let stroke holiday let, the, the, the expected option is for you to take interest only. Um, obviously, you, you can have a repayment basis if you wish, but, but the affordability calculations are normally done on an interest-only basis. Yeah. So the basics of an interest only is to keep the monthly payments as low as possible to maximise the rental return that, that you would exactly obtain. It. That's exactly it. Yeah. And, and a couple of the lenders I met with in the UK, I, I was surprised at the, the eagerness to lend. Um, and I was surprised, for, for example, Airbnb. Um, they're, they're quite happy if you want to buy a property at Airbnb it they're quite happy to lend on, on the projected Airbnb income. And you have to, you have to get official uh, notification effectively of, of, from, from a reliable source of what that projected income is, but then they'll quite happily lend based on that. So there's plenty of options for non-UK residents to buy property in, in the UK and finance that property as well. Very much so. So, the, much. so the days of you having, if you're interested in investing in, in UK property, the days of you having to buy them in cash are long gone, right? L long gone. I, and, and it's only five years ago, I had an Irish guy, Southern Irish guy wanted to buy a property in England. I, we got him the mortgage, we did but it, it was painful. There, there was one, we had two lenders to choose from. At the end of the day, there was only one that would give him a mortgage off that. Now, in this day and age, he would have a, a plethora to choose from. Another point I think is really interesting, obviously we're in Spain, uh, and there's a lot of British in Spain. A lot of our clients are professional landlords who would have, say, a portfolio, who live in Spain mm -hmm. and have done for many years, but live off rental. Yeah. Uh, income. We have the opportunity uh, and, and, uh, uh, to refinance those prop those buy to let portfolios as well. Re refinance them onto better terms for them um, because now suddenly refinancing is not as straightforward as it used to be because when they were UK tax resident, you just went and saw your broker and, and refinanced. Now they're now they're Spanish tax resident. They're actually an expat, and, it, and it's a whole different branch of lenders you're looking at, but. Re refinance them onto onto better terms for the mortgage. Refinance them into portfolio lenders if, if that suits. Um, there's, there's a whole spectrum of choices. For them. That's really interesting because there's a lot of people who are considering moving to Spain and have property assets and rental income. And we can what we're saying is we can service them when they've made that move. E exactly that. That's exactly what... that because because once you've made the move and once you are tax resident in Spain it changes the mortgage, mortgage market and mortgage options for you in the UK and you need to speak to somebody who knows about it. Okay, okay, fantastic. Is there anything else that I think we haven't covered? No, I think, we, I think we've covered most of it. Uh, bridging loans, obviously bridging loans is something that we find we get quite, quite a lot of demand for, for people who are looking at buying in Spain. They need to sell, need to sell in the UK, found the property they want to buy in, in Spain but haven't sold in the UK yet. Uh, a UK bridging loan, which are far, far cheaper than Spanish mm -hmm. bridging loans, yeah. um, just uh, to, uh, 
enables them to buy the property they want without while they wait for the sale of their UK property. So to sum up, what we want to inform everyone is that Fluent Finance Abroad is able to arrange or advise on UK mortgages if any of our uh, clients, our contacts are interested or have an interest in, Spanish, in UK property assets. Exactly, and whether they be whether they be English expats or Americans or Canadians or Spanish or, or, Spanish or whatever. If, if they want a holiday home or, or an investment property in the UK, we can help them with that. So we can do holiday lets, we can do student lets, we can do traditional buy to lets, we can do pretty much anything. Yeah, holiday homes, what, Whatever. pretty much, if, if they want a property, we can help them with it. Brilliant. Thank you very right. much, Stuart. Thank You're you. You're welcome, sir.